This is Lesson 6-7, which is Geometric Sequences and Series. Our essential question is, how can you represent and use geometric sequences and series? So our first example is identifying geometric sequences. So Part A says, is the sequence shown in the table a geometric sequence? If so, write a recursive definition for the sequence. So in order for a uh, sequence to be ge geometric, it means that we are multiplying by a common ratio each time. So where arithmetic was adding or subtracting, um, geometric is always multiplying. So we can see that from 4 to 12, we're multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3. So we can say, yes, this is geometric, and our common ratio R would be 3. So the recursive definition for this, we write as a piecewise function, is a n equals, it's 4 if n equals 1, and it's 3 times the term before. And remember, our symbol for the term before is a with a subscript of n minus 1, and that is when n is greater than 1. Okay, if we look at b, we're also asked, is it a geometric sequence? So you can figure this out, especially if you have decimals, by taking the later number divided by the earlier number. So if I take 9.6 divided by 12, I get 0.8. If I take 7.68 divided by 9.6, I get 0.8. So you're looking to see, and then you can double check that you're multiplying by 0.8 each time. So we would say yes, and our common ratio would be 0.8. And our recursive definition would be a sub n equals, so our first value is 12 when n equals 1, and then 0.8 times a with n minus 1 when n is greater than 1. Our second example is translating between recursive and explicit definitions. <clears throat> so part a says given the recursive definition, what is the explicit definition for geometric sequence? So we looked at ex we looked at recursive in the previous example. So explicit is going to be a n equals a one times your r raised to the n minus one. So for this one, we can find all those values. So our a one is five. What we're multiplying by is right here. It's the one half. That's our common ratio, and then we raise to the n minus one. So that right there would be our explicit definition. So then on part B, given this explicit definition, what's the recursive? So we're working backwards here. So we can tell that 3 is our first number when n equals 1. And we can tell that we're multiplying by 2. So it's going to be 2 times a n minus 1 when n is greater than 1. So this right here would be our recursive definition for that sequence. Okay, so example four is talking about the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. So this equation right here is what we're going to use to find the sum. So you remember back to our very first chapter when we were talking about um, sigma notation for an arithmetic sequence. This is our sigma notation for a geometric sequence. So it says to write the expanded form. So we can tell our first number would be 3, and then we're multiplying by 2 thirds each time. So 3 times 2 thirds is just 2, and that number at the top tells us how many numbers we will have in our series. So it'd be 3, 2, 4 thirds, 8 ninths, 16 20 sevenths, 32 80 firsts, and 64, 240 thirds. Okay, and we can count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms in that series. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the sum using that formula right up there. So our sum is going to be our first, our first number is 3 times 1 minus, we're multiplying by 2 thirds to the seventh power, and then over 1 minus 2 thirds. Be careful when you're typing this into your calculator. The seventh power is only on the 2 thirds on the top part of that equation. So it's not on the whole 1 minus 2 thirds. 
Okay, so we get 2,059 over 243. So that would be our sum of that series. You could test it out by actually in your calculator adding all of those um, values together to verify that that is the correct sum. Okay, and our last example is from information, how do we find out how many terms there are in a finite geometric series? So our first example, first part of this example is how many terms are there in this geometric series? So what we're going to do is we're going to use that explicit formula. So my explicit formula, so we know that the final term in my is going to be 7,688.7, and that's going to be equal to 200 is our first value, and we have to figure out what we're multiplying by each time. So we could take 300 divided by 200, and we get 1.5 raised to the n minus 1. So we're solving for n. So first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 200, and we get 38.44535 equals 1.5 to the n minus 1. So now we're kind of stuck. So when we're stuck with an exponential like this, we're going to switch the form into log form. So this would be log base 1.5 of 38.4435, and that's equal to n minus 1. So then we finally need to add 1 to both sides, and we can do change of base over here on the left-hand side. So this would be log of 38.4435 divided by log of 1.5 plus 1 is going to equal our n value. So if we type that into our calculator, we should get that n equals 10. So that means there are 10 terms in that series. Okay, and the second part of this says the sum of a geometric series is 11,718. The first term of the series is 3, and its common ratio is 5. How many terms are there in the series? So for this one, we're going to use that sum formula. So I'm going to say 11,718 equals 3 times 1 minus 5 to the n over 1 minus 5. Okay, so we know that the denominator is negative 4, and so we're going to multiply both sides by negative 4 to get rid of that denominator. So 36,872 is equal to 3 times 1 minus 5 to the n. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3, so we get negative 15,624 equals 1 minus 5 to the n. Then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, so I get 25 equals negative 5 to the n. So then, since they're both sides are negative, we could divide by a negative 1 to make them positive. And then I'm going to switch it into log form, so be log base 5 of 15,625 equals n. So we can do change of base over here on the left-hand side. So it would be log of 15,625 divided by log of 5, and we should get that n equals 6. So that means there are six terms in that series. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.